this short flip lesson is just to go over the requirements for your mini mineral project. You got this handout in class. You should have it in front of you right now. And as we go along, if you have any questions, you can ask. So first of all, you see at the top with Camp T making this a short week. And I know up there you won't have internet. I know you're not going to do homework there. I know sometimes your weekends are busy. You can't do homework on weekends. So it's due next Friday, September 12th. And as you'll see here, in just about 15 minutes, I put together, I got my project like about halfway done. This shouldn't be something that takes you hours and hours and hours. So you should be able to get it done next week for homework and turn it in next week on Friday, which I believe is Friday, September 12th. And in the meantime, in class, we will be moving on and talking about um, rock types. So the purpose of this is to learn more about minerals and their uses in everyday life, specifically minerals and mining in Colorado, although you do not have to have a Colorado topic. So each student chooses a mineral they would like to know more about. Again, as we've talked about, um, I want this to be something interesting that you learn from, not just a boring project that you do because you have to. Your project may be in the form of a PowerPoint or a pamphlet, or you can make it like an infomercial to sell the product, um, or you can just plain old write it out on um, as a little report. Whatever works best for you. Those of you who have had me as a teacher know these kind of projects give you a chance to do what you like to do, what's best for you. So if you like the PowerPoint, artsy, creative stuff, do that. If you're fine just writing it down, that's fine too. So, um, and of course, you do turn in this uh, rubric with your project. Questions? Yes, you can use Prezi. You can use, um, there's a Google type thing too instead of PowerPoint. You can use any of those. And again, sharing it with me on Google Drive is an awesome way to turn things in. And even if you want to start it and say, am I on the right track? And then send it to me, that works out fine. Okay, so the next page, if you look on the back here, this is the, or I'm sorry, this is the second half of the front. This is the checklist. So I took the, um, and this is the, I just wrote up this assignment over the weekend. This is not an assignment I've given before. So this is, you guys are kind of the test case, all my eighth graders this year. And so if you want to change it slightly or if something doesn't make sense, let me know. This is the first time we're all doing this. So here's a checklist to go through. And instead of just listing it, I would love it if you actually check them off, then you know you did it. Identify the mineral name, common name, scientific name. Again, I'll show you an example here in a few minutes. Um, tell the uses of this mineral, why it's important or valuable. Where is it found? How does it form? Remember we talked about mineral formation. What are the three ways minerals form? Evaporation? Hot water solutions? Magma, so volca volcanic things. They can form on the surface or under the surface. And so then how is it mined and or refined for use? A lot of minerals, when you get them out of the ground, are not in a form you can use them. And in Colorado, some of the mining, like the silver mining, in order to refine the silver and have pure silver that we could use, um, it sometimes takes a lot of nasty chemicals. Um, oh, which goes into this, issues such as pollution or impact from mining. Again, we talked about in our mountain towns, the mine tailings have heavy metals in them. Sometimes the processing created heavy metals. Uh, be prepared to do a one minute presentation that's really fast. Or infomercial to tell the class about this incredibly important and fascinating mineral. And then you have to have some sort of credits, some sort of, I, I don't really care the format. But if you use two websites, here's the two websites. If you use the textbook or whatever, you have to do that so that your information can be verified. Maybe you read something and misunderstood it. Maybe sometimes when you guys do these, pro these projects, I learn things from what you find out, and then I can go back and use those resources. But always, you have to do that sort of a thing. Um, I took a class this summer where um, one of the assignments was we had to do, they called it an elevator speech. And so the one minute presentation would be like, you step into an elevator, you have one minute and you want to tell somebody something, or they ask you something and you have to tell them about it, which is it turned out to be a really fun way to do the assignment. Okay, and then the rubric on the back, and if you looked on Edmodo, I changed the copy of it because what happened was, 
again, those of you who have had Miss G. West, I um, literally took one of her rubrics and pasted it onto here, and then I, I changed a few things. So this might not be a perfect, oh, see, this is the older one, has, well, no, has equation. So it's not a perfect fit, but it gives you a sense of what you need. You have to talk about environmental impact. You should have some pictures or diagrams. You should have scientific facts. You should, it should be creative and eye-catching. And one thing I liked that G. West had in here was um, it can be understood by a variety of audiences. Things are labeled. So I'm not going to go over all of this, and obviously the points on this are not quite right, but in a way to put it together so you had it to look at early if you wanted to, that's that. Questions about this so far? Okay, next, quickly, I thought, here's my little thing, and this is just, like I said, this took me 10 to 15 minutes this morning to get started. Here we go. <clears throat> my sample pro project, my name and today's date, of course. Salt, it's a mineral, you can't live without it. Common name, salt or table salt. Chemical and scientific name is sodium chloride. Chemical formula, NaCl, Na is sodium, Cl is chlorine. Some of this I knew off the top of my head and then I need to go back it up with more information. Uh, general information, salt is actually a term for a large group of chemicals. Salt is a very general term. But when we use the name, we commonly are referring to sodium chloride or table salt. Salt is a necessary part of our diet, but most Americans get way too much salt in our diet, or sodium. When you see it on nutritional labels, it's called sodium. Uh, we get way more than is necessary. Too much sodium can cause health problems such as high blood pressure. Salt adds flavor to food and is also an important preservative of food. Okay, that's the first couple check marks on the list. And so then, my second slide. Working in the salt mines, where is salt found? Salt or sodium chloride is a very common mineral on the earth. It's, all, it's in seawater and in fresh water in much smaller concentrations. Salt deposits are formed by evaporation of water. That's how it's formed, leaving minerals behind. A well-known example of this is the Great Salt Lake in Utah. That's how, I, that's how far I got in 10 minutes. But guess what? That's like halfway done, right? And so then what I did, I said, OK, so now I need to look some things up. What could I very simply search to find my answers? Yeah, so look what I did. I typed in, where is salt mined? Right? And look at this. You know, Wikipedia has gotten to be a little bit better source than it used to be. You can use Wikipedia. Always use more than one source. That helps you validate that it, that it, is, um, that it is accurate. So, a salt mine is a mine that extracts rock salt, or halite, from evaporate for formations. And so you can take a look at this and how stuff works. Salt mining production is done through either deep shaft mining, solution mining, or solar evaporation. So here, right there, first page, simple search. All I did is, where is salt mined? On whatever search engine came up. And here are two sources that will probably provide me with almost everything I need. Okay. Yeah, you need. Oh, absolutely. You can use Google. I actually like Google. This computer is defaulting to Yahoo right now because you know the computers just sometimes do whatever they want to. All right. And so then this is going to talk about it, um, where it's mined, all this kind of stuff. Right. Excellent. So that is a way to do it. Say you're still not sure what you want to do. And actually, if we go back here. From those two websites, I think I can get everything else on my checklist. Did I identify the mineral name, common name? Yes. Did I do this one? Yes. Did I have the mineral name, common name? Yes. Did I tell uses of this mineral why it's important? Yes, I could probably use more. Where is it found? I need to finish this. Are there issues such as pollution? I need to finish this. One minute presentation, I'm not finished. And then I've got two websites I just found that I can probably do. Right? Okay. Then the last thing I wanted to show you, and we will go into in a little bit more detail. I also went to this. This is, I typed in um, th this mining in Colorado, and this comes up. 
this site is okay. It's a little bit confusing because it's talking a lot about um, mining reclamation and so making sure the grounds are safe and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I also went to this. I just simply typed in, in whatever browser you want to use, what minerals are mined in Colorado. And so again, if you look for things like, um, look for things that are associated with univer uh, universities or USGS, what is mined in Colorado in significant amounts, and every single one of these lists coal. Can you use coal as your project? No, why not? Why is coal not a mineral? It, it is organic, not inorganic. Um, and its composition is different, right? There's different types of coal. So um, gold, gypsum, limestone, silver. Limestone also, not a mineral, although it's mined in Colorado. Silver molybdenum, soda ash, sodium bicarb. Do you guys know what sodium bicarbonate is? Baking soda. Apparently, I did not know that. So here's the other thing, and then some, but somewhere, and these are probably not the greatest sites you need to look a little more. This one says, as pointed about above quite correctly, gold is an element, not a mineral. Um, if it's an element, does that mean it can't be a mineral? Not sure about that, because by definition, by definition, gold could be a mineral, right? Is it a solid? Is it naturally occurring? Is it naturally occurring? Inorganic? Is it, does it have a crystalline structure? I'm not sure. I think, I, I'm not sure about the crystalline structure. Does it have a definite chemical composition? Yes. <laughs> so it definitely has four of the five. We've talked about it. Honestly, if you want to do gold or silver or whatever, I am fine with you doing that. If you do it, look into is it really a mineral or not it might be one of those things that people disagree on uh, the only one i'm not sure about is the chemical thing but i know that fool's gold iron pyrite is definitely a mineral so we'll take a look at those things um all right questions about our project okay so next we're actually going to look at a little bit of the mining in colorado uh, to give you a few more ideas but that is the basics of what you need to do for the project. All right.